about scale because we're so small. Mm. Right. You don't get economies of scale, right? Mm. You can't do anything in bulk, mm. really. Um, a, w- any one of our entire countries is less than the size of Nairobi alone, yes. right? So, mm. But here you have a much more multifaceted layer of of issues, of challenges um, around, you know, the, the the sort of the spread that you're trying to reach people at yes. really far distances. Mm. Um, the cost of delivering that service is also impacted by the fact that we have such a, we're starting from such a low base. Mm. And then, of course, there's the issue of access to finance and mm. so on. So I'm finding that the issues are, there's a really complex sort of layers of the onion that you kind of have yeah. to peel apart to understand energy access. People right. think it's just, oh, just dash out the solar panels. No, mm. it's, it's not that simple, right? right? right. Um, so that's what I've been finding. But I find that there is so much interest, especially from young people. Yes. Um, so much interest. There is so much uh, goodwill. There is so much, um, you know, a- attention, both from the media, from the public sector, from the private sector. A lot of donors pouring in funds and support for the continent. So I am I'm a believer. I do think that we're going to get there and, and get to those universal energy access goals for the continent. Oh, brilliant. I love the optimism. And yes. I like that you uh, beautifully noted that we are more alike than we think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and also you coming in from the Caribbean. Um, hopefully I'm going to go there one day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just go there through music. But, um, you know, it, it, it's interesting that uh, we probably don't even know there's a lot we can learn from each other. Yeah. And that's why this amazing um, uh, event is going to be happening at, at Karura on the 8th and 9th. Yeah. Uh, David. You know, I love the fact that, first of all, the energy, no pun intended, <laughs> but some pun intended, the energy that you're speaking with is, is, is so contagious on this conversation. And I think that's something that's needed, especially when people are trying to transition from something that they've known to something that they don't really know about, especially in our rural communities. You know, sometimes they hear a lot of these things and a lot of the big words, and they can get a little bit anxious. Um, on things like cost, like you just mentioned. And so for some of them who are listening in right now from different parts of this this country and are listening right now, and they're hearing the costs, especially when it comes to transitioning from what they know to what they don't know but can help them, who's going to foot all those costs And when it comes to this type of uh, energy access and transition? Mm-hmm. And should they really be anxious? I, I don't think so. Um, the, up co- the upfront costs are high. There's no mm. doubt about that. You know, we talked about the fact that across the continent, we're trying to reach communities that are hundreds of kilometers away from any urban core mm-hmm. or any any trans, any um, uh, generation core. So the upfront costs are naturally going to be high. But that's not to say that they aren't high everywhere. Anywhere that you're trying to do rural electrification, it's expensive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And in, even in the U.S., mm-hmm. uh, it's a fairly rural uh, country. And actually, it was even more rural in the 1930s when they started this effort to rural, to electrify rural communities. They uh, set up the Rural Electrification Act of mm-hmm. 1936, okay. and that's when they started. So right? almost 100 years ago. Almost mm-hmm. 100 years ago. Yeah. And by 1985, they had almost universal, meaning 100% energy access. It's a very expensive exercise, but the federal government basically created a loan program for all of these local cooperatives. Um, so, so it's not that it's more expensive here than it is anywhere. It's, it's a, it is an expensive mm. exercise. Usually there are public funds that help subsidize this cost. Mm-hmm. But where do those funds come from when countries are as heavily indebted as, as our countries mm-hmm. are? This is kind of the big question, mm-hmm. right? So you have a lot of the multinational development banks starting to pour in. So for instance, the World Bank has the Kenya Off-Grid Solar Access Project, COSAP, where they are using World Bank funds to provide subsidies mm-hmm. or incentives for mini-grid developers, solar home system providers, um, even distributed utilities for delivering Connection, so they're helping to bring down the costs, but honestly, the gap is still big. The IEA estimate, the International Energy Agency, that is, it estimates we need about a hundred billion US dollars mm-hmm. per year. Wow! Between now and twenty forty, to if we were to make sure that everyone has access, mm. so it's it's not cheap, mm-hmm. but we have to find ways together to make it to make it work because. It's not meant to be also a commercial exercise. This mm-hmm. is a social mandate, right? Yeah. It's everyone's right yeah. to, to have to have access to electricity. So yeah. I think people don't need to be worried. I think people in these communities, um, you know, uh, just uh, it's good to know that there are developers, both on the public and the private side, doing their best to try and reach communities wherever they are. And, mm-hmm. and the good thing is the costs of technologies are coming down yeah. over time. Mm-hmm. And there are a number of technologies. There's almost th- th- when I was when I was doing this work um, back in the early 
Let me not age myself. <laughs> <laughs> and I was doing this work back in the day. Yes. Uh, <laughs> the technologies that we had were nothing like what we have today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, there, there are countries in the world that feel that they can get to net zero grids by 2035. Wow. That is less than 10 years. Mm. The technology game has completely changed. So I think there's hope. Yeah. Mm. yeah. No, I like uh, the optimism. Yeah. And of course, um, I like the contrast and comparisons and the expertise that you bring coming from the field of energy science. Um, we look at our local communities and we have a lot of questions and we see an urgency to actually have uh, sustainable solutions. I am looking at, you know, energy being a huge part of where we're going. And uh, to have, you know, our economies thrive, we need to see what are the solutions, what are the tips, um, what are some of the things that we can actually tap 